Dear colleagues and friends, attendees of the Be Best Biofuture Conference, I'm Glaucia Souza, professor at the University of Sao Paulo and coordinator of APESP Bioenergy Research Program, BioN. I'm very happy to introduce you to the session on energy cane and advanced biofuels. The theme is one that we follow since the first edition of BBEST 10 years ago. In fact, in the last BBEST, we had a tutorial on energy cane and a survey conducted on its relevance for the Brazilian energy matrix that you'll hear about today. The speakers bring news on energy cane development, details on the breeding of new cultivars, very impressive progress on yields. We will hear how the energy cane is being used in industrial scales and also the challenges of using high fiber crops in the current infrastructure of mills, either for biofuels or for bioelectricity. We are in the learning curve to take advantage of the full potential of energy cane, but the general consensus appears to be that everybody wants to keep working on it. With more fiber available, either from straw or by gas, you will hear companies that are making much more from this biomass. Uh, we see selling of bioethanol, biogas from Vinas, biomethane, biochemicals, nan nanocellulose, lignin products, pellets, and certified GHG emission reductions from advanced biofuels. New technologies bringing versatility to the use of feedstocks and disruptive approaches to fiber solubilization will be presented. We are in an important moment. While sugar continues to be cheaper than fiber and the discussion continues on how to deal with the higher costs of lignocellulosics, we also have biorefineries presenting, delivering their nameplate capacities and an increasing demand for advanced biofuels in some markets that demand as, as well the technologies that these uh, companies and institutions can make. We heard a lot about policy for a low carbon economy in this conference and this session is about the innovation, the other side of the coin, what we are able to deliver. Let me introduce you now to our speakers. The session brings to you José Bresciani, from Grambio, Marisa Coral from Raizen, Walter Maccheroni from São Martinho, Herman Hoffman from Hidesa, Dario Giordano from Versalles, and Lilind from the A2G Lab. Thank you for honoring the best and the Biofuture Conference with your great presentations. Hello, everybody. It's a big pleasure to be here. I thank you for the invite. My name is José Preciani. I am a PhD in plant breeding and a, a feedstock director at the Grand Bio. And the title of the, the presentation is Industrial Implementation of Energy Cane and Advanced Biofuels at the Grand Bio. Grand Bio is a Brazilian company that was uh, uh, started by 2011. So it, it, ha it has only 10 years old. Uh, it's, uh, we can say that it's the the first biotech uh, company in Brazil uh, with focus in second generation ethanol and biofuels. We start uh, uh, building our first industry by 2013. We license uh, second generation ethanol technology from an Italy company. Uh, and we also uh, start at the same time a, a sugarcane uh, ready program with focus in high biomass material. When we started on the operation of the plant by to the end of 2014, uh, uh, unfortunately, the technology that we licensed didn't work very well. And uh, we had to acquire another uh, bio, uh, technology company in the United States, uh, we call API. And these guys with our team uh, work hard during the last, uh, five years in terms to solve the, all the gaps in the technology. And today, uh, or, or better, last year, we finally, we solve all the gaps, so we fixed all the problems that we have in our technology. And we have our uh, uh, industry running and producing, uh, processing uh, sugarcane straw and producing first generation ethanol. At this time, 
with uh, this team from the American company, American uh, 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 process company that we acquired. At the beginning, 25%, but today we have 100% on that. We created several new uh, technologies, so several new patents uh, to that solve all the technology process uh, uh, from the, the second generation ethanol production. And we also created new technologies to produce other uh, products, biochemicals, and including nanocellulose. Uh, at, at last year, uh, in the last year, we become so with the, these technologies, we become the global leader in second generation ethanol. We signed a partnership with a, a Tecnimod license a, a company in Italy to, to uh, build other plants across the world. And they, in the sugarcane uh, breeding program, we uh, license 11 varieties and we start to, uh, uh, we protect the 11 varieties and we start to license these varieties to, to growers in Brazil and outside Brazil. And today we have 20 contracts with this material. So in the last 10 years, uh, uh, we, we transform the technology that we licensed at the beginning. And then now we are global leader in second generation technologies in, in Pentanol. We have today, we have an industry in Alagoas, uh, in the northeast of Brazil. Uh, we have also the uh, sugar cane breeding uh, site. Biovertis, also in the Alagoas state. We have a, a, a biotech lab uh, in Sao Paulo uh, state, in Sao Paulo city as well, called Biocellary, where we, we, we develop the yeast uh, and microorganisms. We have the main uh, office in Sao Paulo, and we have an, another uh, uh, office in, uh, in the lab in the United States. Uh, and including a, a, a pilot plant where we develop new technologies and even the technologies to produce biochemicals, jet fuels, and nanocellulose. I'll talk a little bit later. So today we are able to transform a straw that can be used, that can be sugarcane straw as the plant that we have in the artist, or they can be a dedicated energy crop like energy cane. And with this uh, technologies that we develop in, in, in Brazil, we can produce uh, uh, ethanol, basically uh, ethanol. We have technology to produce biofuels at uh, jet, jet biofuels, biodiesel, biochemicals, and even nanocellulose. I will talk a little bit about these three different uh, processes. The second generation ethanol is the, the plate that we have uh, uh, in, the, in the Lagoas states. We use the, the sugar cane straw. We, we harvest the straw and produce bales, and we, then we process this bale. And the, the, the three steps uh, of the process are the pre treatments where we open the, the, the wall of the biomass. Then we have the hydrolysis where we put the uh, 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 cellulose and hemp cellulose chain to enzymes that cut the ligations. Then we have uh, 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 monomers where we send it to the third part where we run the fermentation using a, a, a yeast that we develop uh, uh, inside the ground bio, bio celery. Then the, the last process is the distillation is similar to the to the first generation meal, but we have the lignin that came with the, the violence. And it is lignin, we, we dry this lignin, and then we send this dry up lignin to the boiler where we produce electricity uh, and the stem for the process and even for the, the, the market to the grid like uh, uh, electricity. Well, just for our overview, this. Uh, this is the plant uh, the, that we have in Alagoas. Uh, we are seeing this, the steps, all the steps, the biomass, the, the, the boiler, the pretreatment, the hydrolysis, fermentation, distillation, filtration of lignin, and so on. This is uh, uh, to show you how we manage the straw. We, we harvest the straw after the first generation meals uh, harvest the sugarcane. 
when the, the, the straw become 12% uh, uh, drier, we start harvesting. We produce bale and we can storage this bale for, the, for a long time, just covering the, the, the pile. So we can, we can, we can uh, run the, the, the ethanol uh, plant uh, uh, all year long. It's, it's, it's a advantage in comparison with first generation because we can we can uh, uh, use much better the the capex uh, industrial capex to to produce uh, all year long. In addition to the to the straw, we can uh, uh, we can use energy cane. So energy cane are, are sugar cane varieties with a higher yield and a higher fiber. We can produce, uh, for have an idea, the same sugars per hectare uh, uh, as uh, first generation uh, varieties, as conventional sugar cane varieties, but we can produce uh, three to four more uh, uh, fiber per hectare. And this fiber can be two or three, more, three times more than the eucalyptus, for instance. We have two pipelines there. We have a conventional pipelines and we have a, a, a biotech with transgenic lines uh, running as well. Uh, the, the, the basic uh, uh, design that we, we have in the Grand Bio is to use uh, energy cane and to combine the first and second generation. The, the juice uh, goes to first generation ethanol and the bagas can be for the second generation ethanol and foreign energy. And the, the good on this is that uh, the, the carbon footprint of the life cycle uh, can become negative. So if it, today second generation uh, uh, ethanol produce uh, at least around the 80 to 90 grams of CO2 equivalent per megajoule. A second generation ethanol combined with energy cane can capture this nine grams of uh, CO2 equivalent per megajoule. So we are not uh, 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 putting less CO2 in the atmosphere. So we are capturing more than we are releasing to the atmosphere. It's very sustainable uh, 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 example of uh, uh, carbon footprint. We we are agnostic. The technology is agnostic for different uh, uh, materials. So you can use uh, different stress, uh, different straws, uh, and the other dedicated crops. There is no problem with that. One second step that we have is that uh, uh, we can we can uh, uh, run AVAP technology where we can, uh, in the process, we can uh, produce uh, different grains, uh, chains of products. We can, we can uh, produce uh, uh, only uh, glucose that came from the, the, the cellulose, and we can produce only, only uh, hemicellulose sugars, uh, mainly xylose that came from the hemicellulose. So you can separate these this strings and these strains can be used for, for dedicated bio, biochemicals, uh, uh, strains, and products. And we can also uh, have the, the, the cellulose, uh, where we can uh, uh, use this cellulose for non-cellulose production in the process. We are running this technology in our pilot, pilot plant in, in the United States. So we have today the technology to, to, to run these uh, uh, strains of, uh, of sugars. And we are also running there the technology for our nanocellulose uh, uh, process. So nanocellulose is uh, per se uh, uh, a revolution in the second generation. So ethanol can be produced cheaper than the, the, the second generation. Ethanol can be produced cheaper than the first generation. Uh, uh, cellulose sugars, uh, cellulose plus hemi cellulose can be producing a large amount and cheaper than the, the, the sugars that were produced in the first generation to integrate the biochemicals uh, uh, productions. And you can also have a, a, a separate uh, cellulose strain where we can clean this cellulose and, and go deeper and produce uh, uh, nanofibers and nanocrystals of, uh, of uh, uh, Cellulose, so it should be nanocellulose, and this nanocellulose came from the AVAP process, uh, including additional steps that we call bioclues. But we are we are uh, bleaching this uh, uh, 
this uh, cell loss. And we, with the mechanical treatment, we can produce uh, uh, nanofibers and nanocrystals, or we can also include some part of lignin coated in the process and produce uh, lignin coated nanofibers and nanocrystals. This is, uh, can be very, very clean product and can be used for specialty markets. It's a very large uh, uh, example of specialty markets where we can use this material. Or we can use the green box process that, that is the one that we have in Alagoas and the, in, including the bioplus process, we can produce uh, uh, nanofibers uh, of cellulose not so clean uh, uh, like this one, but uh, it's uh, good enough for commodity markets because the price is not so expensive. So we can use in, in, in paperboard, the hardboard, reinforced plastics, so uh, we can tires and so on. For you have an idea, so the, the list of places where I can use these materials are, are so much. So here we have some examples. And all these ones that are in the in the red uh, circle, we are we are addressing by uh, Grand Bio. For you have an example, so if you use uh, three percent of uh, nano nano cellulose in tires, you can increase uh, the life of the tire more than 20 percent, and you can uh, make the the the, the tire is uh, lower uh, in the in the in the weights. And the car can uh, uh, spend uh, less fuels uh, in the in the running. It's a very amazing the process. It is this. Uh, I hope uh, the time is so fast. I hope it is okay. I thank you all very much for uh, the opportunity. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, my name is Marisa Coral. I'm the E2G Process and Development Manager at Raizen. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here to, uh, today to talk uh, with you a little bit about uh, our company and uh, how uh, Raizen is uh, supporting the energy transition. Uh, here I would like to show just um, a quick overview about Raizen. So we are a joint venture between Shell and Cosan that was formed back in 2011. And uh, this year we are completing 10 years of, uh, uh, of since the beginning of the JV. And today Raizen is organized in two companies, uh, Raizen Energy and Raizen Fuels. So at Raizen Energy, we have centralized all the operations related to uh, the sugarcane plantation, uh, the sugarcane processing to produce uh, sugar and ethanol uh, in our mills. Uh, also the production of the renewable energy uh, and also biogas and the 2G. Uh, at, high, at the downstream area, we have the fuse distribution and the marketing uh, being led by the brand uh, Shell uh, in Brazil and uh, Argentina. Raizen is an integrated company of energy and we are present from the field uh, to the final customers. So uh, today our business segments, they are divided in four main areas. Uh, renewables, sugar, uh, marketing services, and proximity and uh, retail. Heisen is a company dedicated uh, to, to bring energy solutions to the market. Uh, we have the largest bioenergy park in the world, and by processing the, the sugar cane, we have the opportunity to, to deliver biofuels, advanced biofuels, bioelectricity, uh, and raw material to generate different bioproducts. We have the production of the 1G ethanol, which is a very strategic biofuel that can uh, replace the fossil fuels in a very competitive cost. And uh, by, by processing the residual biomass that we have available in our industries, uh, we can generate different uh, products such as uh, bioelectricity, and pellets. Uh, the pellets they, today they are focused mainly on external market to replace uh, fossil fuels. 
uh, the bioelectricity, uh, all uh, high easing mills today, they are self-sustainable uh, in terms of energy production and uh, more uh, 13 of them has uh, have uh, extra uh, capacity to export and uh, sell energy into the grid. And finally, uh, when uh, we also have our proprietary technology to process this biomass, uh, such as uh, sugarcane baguettes and the straw to generate uh, second uh, generation ethanol, uh, which has the potential to increase by 50% our production using the same uh, plantation area. And uh, uh, recently, we have uh, commissioned our uh, biogas plant uh, located at Bonfim Mill, uh, which has the capacity to increase our energy production by about 50% uh, using uh, the, the vinhas and uh, the filter cake uh, to generate the additional energy. Raizen is the fourth uh, largest company in Brazil, and uh, based on that, we can have a significant and positive impact in our society. So uh, we have made some uh, public commitments uh, to the market, to our shareholders, to support uh, the goals, uh, the ESG goals established by ONU by uh, 2000, um, 2030. So Raizen, it's a, it's a company with a very strong governance and based on ethics and compliance. And uh, uh, we are positioning ourselves as a company that will uh, support the energy transition. And uh, when we look to, to our operation, we can contribute to that uh, in different ways by promoting the best uh, land usage, uh, promoting uh, the delivery of uh, products, renewable products uh, with lower uh, footprint and uh, making the best usage of uh, the renewable source under our control, uh, besides promoting uh, the, the diversity and inclusion, uh, making positive impact on the society around uh, our uh, the locations where we have our operations in place and promoting the human rights. As a company with a large potential to grow in the next uh, few years, uh, Haizin has uh, invested in the Celoski ethanol as a strategic uh, business uh, to support our growth. Uh, and why uh, it, this technology is so uh, important and, uh, and can help us to change the future. Uh, we all know that we have a rising demand for, for energy with the increasing of the, the world population in the next decades. Uh, by delivering uh, products such as the celloski ethanol with a lower footprint, we can also uh, support the, 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 uh, a lower dependency on foreign fuels and uh, the volatility of the oil supply. Uh, we can uh, support the, uh, the energy transition uh, and the, the, by uh, reaching the, the decarbonization targets and also we can boost the local economy uh, bringing more productivity to our fields and uh, also generating new job positions uh, with this new industry. And we believe that to continue to invest and promote the cellulosic uh, uh, ethanol technology, we have the right culture. About one third of the energy present in the sugar cane is used today uh, to produce sugar by extracting the juice and processing it in our mills. Uh, we have a, another one third, uh, which is uh, the baguettes uh, that can be used for both 2G and, and bioelectricity. And uh, the, the remaining one third, it is still uh, in the straw. That uh, uh, it's still a challenge related to the, the collection and the processing that into the mills 
but with a large potential in the future with development of new technologies. Uh, considering the, the scenario and the status of our 2G technology, we have a proprietary technology that has been developed for the last uh, uh, 15 years, um, which is validated in our commercial scale at Costa Pinto. We are the only company, uh, the only, only industrial plant that is operating in commercial scale in a continuous operation since uh, 2014. Uh, and today, our, uh, we have already produced and exported more than 85 million liters of E2G. Uh, of course, we have focused on the external market, uh, considering the premium price that we can get for this product, uh, uh, considering the lower footprint compared to the fossil fuels. We can reduce uh, about 80% compared to fossil fuels and about 30% when we compare with the, the 1G uh, ethanol. And uh, uh, to, to support and guarantee this, uh, this premium price, we have uh, submitted our process and our pro production process to different certifications uh, from Europe and US that can recognize and guarantee uh, the, the efficiency uh, in our operation. The application of uh, renewable fuels uh, is a proven alternative to support the reduction of CO2 emissions. And when we look to high easing potential and, uh, and current operations, uh, we have uh, a uh, contribution of about 5.2 million tons of CO2 avoided annually uh, by delivering our, our biofuels uh, for transportation. Uh, and uh, when we compare to new technologies, uh, for example, the electric vehicles, we still, uh, when we look the overall cycle, we still have the lowest footprints, uh, the lowest emissions when we compare uh, the, the flex fuels, flex cars uh, with 1G ethanol. And if we bring the 2G into this comparison, we can still reduce by about 30% uh, the fuel contribution in the overall uh, food, uh, uh, CO2 emission. Our first commercial uh, E2G plant was inaugurated back in 2014 and it's located in Piracicaba. Uh, in our uh, Costa Pinto mill and uh, has a, a nameplate uh, project capacity of 42 million liters of ethanol per year. Our pretreatment technology is uh, based on its steam explosion catalyzed uh, with diluted acid and after this step we have two streams, the C5 and the C6. Uh, where the C6 is, C6 is rich in cellulose and lignin. The cellulose can be hydrolyzed by the enzyme application and after a solid liquid separation, we segregate the lignin that uh, can be burned to generate steam and electricity to maintain the plant. Uh, both sugar C5 and C6, they can be fermented to produce ethanol and we have the final cellulosic ethanol after the distillation process. Uh, just uh, to give an idea about the efficiency related to our technology today, uh, one ton of uh, sugar cane baguette can generate about uh, 260 liters of H2G, uh, considering the conversion of both C5 and C6 sugars into ethanol. Uh, here we have a quick summary of our learning curve since uh, the plant commissioning back in 2014. So I think we can divide the challenge that we have faced in three main waves. The first one was related to equipment reliability that we have solved by developing new materials and uh, bringing more robust equipment to, to the operation. Uh, the second one was related to process optimization and the bioprocess uh, uh, associated with the implementation of new yeast and, and uh, enzymes into our, our plant, uh, customized to our process. And finally, with the increasing uh, plant capacity, uh, the biomass logistics. Uh, so we have finalized the last operational season 
uh, with 24 million liters, uh, with the validation of our technology reaching the, the capacity, plant capacity for our pretreatment area and uh, the bioprocess associated to C5 and C6 conversion. So based on that, we believe that our technology is ready for the exponential deployment. And uh, finally, I just brought here uh, one example of uh, diversity in terms of application of these new products besides the, the, the fuel uh, transportation. Uh, we have uh, established a strategic partnership with Boticario to launch the first lines of uh, cosmetics and, and uh, perfumes with using our E2G uh, ethanol. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, and please feel free to be in contact if you have any question or, or doubts related to our technology. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, I hope that everybody is in a good health. My name is Walter Maccheroni. I'm a PhD in molecular genetics, a plant breeder, and a scientist by training. So I'm gonna show you guys my screen and we're gonna talk about energy cane and advanced biofuels. First of all, I would like to thank the Be Best conference organizers for the opportunity to show some of, of the things that we are doing in my team. So my idea is to go through those four topics, a short presentation of my team. I'm gonna just mention one point of my team strategy to develop innovation. I'm gonna mention a few projects that we are carrying out. And then at the end, I'm gonna mention some challenges that we see focus on energy cane and the use of energy cane in sugar mills, sugar cane mills. So Somaritinho is a group of four sugar cane mills, three of them located in Sao Paulo State and one in Goiás State. We cultivate 300,000 hectares of sugar cane that provides up to 24 million cubic metric tons of sugarcane for those four mills. We have most of the agriculture operations mechanized. We are talking about uh, planting and harvesting mainly. And with the sugarcane that we process, the feedstock, we can produce 65% of sugar and 35% of ethanol or vice versa. Okay, so we have a flex industry that we can shift from one day to the other, how much we're gonna make of sugar and ethanol. So that's the Somaritinho mill. It's the largest in the world. We process 10 million tons of uh, sugar cane. Santa Cruz and Iracema mill. And the newest mill that we have, Boa Vista mill located in Goiás state. It's a distillery. It produces only ethanol. All the four mills produce electricity, burning bagasse in the steam boilers as well. But this one, only ethanol, not sugar. So the products, sugar, ethanol, and electricity. Most of the electricity we use to run the operations, the surplus we sell to the national grid. And that's a pile of bagasse. Uh, it's another product. Sometimes we have a surplus of bagasse, we can sell it as well or we can use for other purpose. And mainly we've been researching technologies to convert bagasse into more valuable products. So talking about the innovation strategy of the company, we are going a digital transformation journey and we cooperate our strategy is to do open innovation. In so every, every type of technology that doesn't belong to our core, we use open innovation. That is, we look in the ecosystem, the national and international ecosystem, seeking for partners that understand the technology and can co cooperate with us. So here I can show you guys universities, financial support agencies, startups, and big companies, for an example. So how we deal with energy cane, one of the subjects of uh, this round table. 
we do partnerships with all breeding programs of sugarcane in Brazil. We bring to the sugar mills part of the experiments that the breeding program has. So we take care of the breeding program with the breeding program. Here we can see many plots of trials of sugarcane. We have around 146 experiments per year, almost 6,000 plots of uh, experiments. So uh, we have a size close to the largest breeding programs in the world. So by doing these plots, we acquire knowledge regarding sugarcane varieties as well as energy cane varieties. So we keep every year evaluating all types of materials, materials targeting sugar, targeting fiber. Here uh, showing uh, the results of this investment in breeding, in evaluation and trials. Here we are showing a new clone of sugarcane that we've been uh, uh, increasing the planting and the results in tons per hectare compared to the average varieties, old varieties that we have or, or older than this new clone and how much this new clone is bringing of tons of sugarcane to the company. So it's an effort that is being paid many times over the years. Regarding fuels, we've been interacting with many startups and big companies looking for new opportunities in terms of advanced biofuels. Uh, today, the major project that we have is the production of biogas, methane, from vinas. Vinas is a liquid effluent coming out of the fermentation of sugar and production of ethanol. We can use it to produce biogas and today we produce biogas and we also run big trucks with methane and biogas. So we try to develop both ends of the technology, the production of biogas and the use of biogas. And regarding the last slide that I mentioned to you guys before, looking at energy cane, uh, today San Martinho does not plant commercially energy cane. We understand that uh, the technology is not so mature yet. Just to remind you guys that uh, the farm mills, they were made to crush sugar cane. So low fiber, high sugar. To change the industrial plant and also the processes in the agriculture side, it's very economic intensive, too much investment. So here regarding the challenges, I'm not talking about a green field, but adopting energy cane in our already working mills. So for us, the major challenge for energy cane in mills is the economic side of the business. So today sugar pays better or gives better returns than fiber. However, we understand that new technolo technologies have a learning curve. They become mature every year. So here I show the hype cycle, life cycle of a new technology. It's a way of seeing uh, the life cycle of a new technology uh, made by Gartner company. So San Martin understands that many technologies such as ethanol 2G, gasification of biomass, are technologies that have a great future, but they are not so mature yet for a mill already operating targeting sugar. So San Martin keeps tracking those technologies and the big players of those technologies to identify the right time to speed up the planting of energy cane. So another challenges that energy cane has regards to the breeding process and the breeders know well those challenges. So we are talking about producing a portfolio of energy cane varieties that can fit many uh, sugar mills and the way that those sugar mill mills work. 
So it's the issue of the trade-off of sugar and fiber. And what matters for a sugar meal is tons of sugar per hectare. Uh, there are other problems such as flowering, which is a big problem for the production of sugar, and some diseases and pests. And smut is a type of fungal disease. And today, when you look at the two types of energy cane, type, type, one, uh, type one, which has a little bit more sugar than fiber, and type two, which is more fiber than sugar, type one is more attractive today for the sugar mills. In the field operations, we can see some challenges regarding harvesting and transportation of sugar to uh, sugar cane to the industry. Harvesting, we have to decide if we are going to harvest the whole cane to take advantage of all the biomass that the energy cane produces, or if we are going to harvest only the stalks, trying to, to concentrate the efforts into the sugar, if we are going to use baling to transport this uh, biomass, the sugar cane, in the transportation, if you, if you harvest whole cane, there is a big problem of low density of the, the, the truck load, which is a big problem because when you put tons of sugar cane transported against cost, low density, it's a big bottleneck. And finally, industrial operations. Uh, as I told you guys, I'm talking about mills already working with sugarcane varieties. So to, to crush the sugarcane varieties, there is a setup of the equipments regarding pressure, soaking, and many other parameters that is really difficult to adjust. And once they are adjusted, they can operate only with one type of variety let's say sugarcane varieties. So to operate with two types of materials, it's very difficult today because you have to change the setup of the crushing rolls every time that you change the variety, sugarcane and energy cane. And also, if you bring biomass, if you bring to the industry whole cane together with the trash that leaves and all the biomass that you can, you're gonna have problems in the steam boilers because this type of material uh, contains different types of chemicals such as chloride and chloride is a big problem for steam boilers because it's too much corrosive. So anyways, San Martino keeps tracking the evolution of the breeding programs, the industrial technologies to avoid such those problems. We have in our plots uh, materials from type 1 and type 2 being evaluated and as soon as we identify evolution of the technologies that convert fiber in new products, some are is prepared to start new processes using fiber as the main target. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm going to leave my email with you guys and if you have any questions, any doubts, please Write me an email and it's going to be a pleasure to interact with you. Bye bye. First of all, we would like to thank the organization of this event that invited us to be part of this round table, Industrial Implementation of Energy Cane and Advanced Biofuel. Biofuels. We are going to talk about energy cane breeding. This uh, presentation uh, was prepared by myself, Danilo Cus and Thiago Balsalub, that are members or, of our team of UFSCA in Araras. That's a, a picture of, of our breeding station in Alagoas, where we start our breeding doing the crosses of sugarcane. We are a, a network of 10 universities called RIDESA, Inter University Network for the Development of Sugar and Energy Cane Sector. We are 10 universities, and the main purpose of the research is the development of sugar cane varieties. Of course, we work mainly with conventional sugar cane, and some years ago, we start with also develop clones of energy cane 
type 1 and type 2. Giving you our view what energy is used in Brazil, our country is one of the countries that has used more renewable source of energy, 46.1. 18 sugarcane biomass, hydropower 12.4, firewood and charcoal 8.7, and other renewables 7%. The use energy used in Brazil, we use 32% in transport, 30% in industry, and 11.2% in energy sector. How the sugarcane bagasse take part of it, of it. In the transport, mainly with cars, 20.6 ethanol. In the industry, 16.7 sugarcane bagasse. And energy sector, 52.2 sugarcane bagasse. In uh, 2017, we were at the uh, best tutorial and we present a survey that we did with UNICA, that is a union of sugarcane mills, STABI, that is a Society of Sugarcane Technology in Brazilian. Society of Sugarcane Technology and Redesa. And we did a survey asking some questions because we wanted to know what do people think about energy cane. So we did this survey with universe and research institutes, sugarcane mills, sugarcane and energy cane breeding programs, and associations and entities. To give you, to refresh what is energy gain, type 1 and type 2. Type 1, it's very similar to conventional sugarcane bride. It has less than 65% of water, fiber between 13 and 17, sugar more than 13, and the users is for sugar, ethanol, 1G, and electricity. Energy cane type 2 it has less than 60% of water, more than 30% of fiber, less than 10% of sugar. And the usage is for ethanol, 2G, electricity, and others use. The first question was, do you believe energy can, can contribute to Brazilian energy metrics? Why? So, 100% believe that energy can, can contribute to Brazilian energy metrics. And the reasons were because it has higher biomass production, electricity production, 1G and 2G ethanol production. It can be used energy came for restrictive environments and can be used also to heat and steam production. Other questions, of course we did more than these two questions, but these two we considered the most important to give you idea what people think. What do you expect from breeding programs? A conventional cane with more fiber and less sugar content or a typical energy cane with much more fiber and lower sugar content. There was a consensus, consensus inside the group and people believe we should go to obtain type 1 with more fiber and less sugar content, increased biomass that could be preset at this time with minor adaptions at the industrials that we have uh, in Brazil with minor adaption that's why people think type 1 will be more interesting 
because uh, we started to to consider the importance of energy gain, we got some cycle spontaneo from the world collection sugarcane and related grass in Miami, Florida. You see here the difference of number of sugar spontaneo before 2013 and after 2013. We have an increase in our genotype collection, the number of saccharum spontaneo. Comparing energy cane and sugar cane, energy cane has more plant fiber, high biomass yield, more than 200 tons of fresh biomass, a deeper root system with the presence of rhizomes, less stalks weight with more stalks, but the stalks are thin. Propagation rate is two and three times higher than conventional sugarcane. It has higher longevity, less input to grow, and reduced production cost. The reduction is between 50 to 70 percent, and it has higher tolerance to biotic and abiotic stress. Challenge in the selection of energy cane clones. We have to work hard to get simultaneously the increase in the, of sugar and fiber. We have to get a, a balance between stock mass and tillery. We have to care with smooth resistance because saccharum is continuous by his genome it's much susceptible to smut that is a disease one of the important diseases of sugarcane and flowered it happens with much clones so we have to work hard to get to obtain clones that not to flower too much or not flower comparing and showing uh, the results of ton of fresh biomass per hectare from comparing 92,579, it's the most important sugarcane variety conventional in the northeast of Brazil, comparing with uh, energy cane RB12,960. It shows we have here present five harvests. In the first harvest, the sugar cane, conventional sugarcane produce more, but as long as we go to more harvest, we, we see the difference with more production of the energy cane, considering tons of fresh biomass per hectare. Here, comparing again energy cane versus a sugar cane, 92,579, the production of showing tons of dry matter per hectare and tons of can cane per hectare, 92,579, a type 1 and a type 2. It shows the higher production of mass of the energy cane, type 1 and also type 2. Technical challenge with energy cane. We have to develop mechanic harvest because there is high production and higher fiber content. We have to develop sugar cane harvest specific to a high production. We have to develop meals with efficiency to extracting the juice and we have to develop the industrial process to uh, use the energy cane. A current start of energy cane development, what the, were the commercial release recently? For 24 varieties registered by the National Plant Variety Protection Service. That's because every breeding program keeps working 
with energy can nobody wants to be out of it everybody all the breathing program they want to keep working because when times come that energy can be will become suddenly very important for us we will have the varieties develop the market will define the cane profile the type of cane that will be used in, in the future will depend of the price of the sugar the price of ethanol the price of electricity and the biochemicals but for certain energy cane will be cultivated in recitative environments that's everybody agree with this that energy cane will be cultivated in recitative environments that's what you, we wanted to present that's another view of our breathing station in Maceió again I would like to thank the organization of the event that invited us to be the part of this such important event thank you very much okay thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to introduce uh, um, the Versalis uh, experience uh, regarding advanced bioethanol projects and it's a pleasure for me to be attending at this uh, Biofuture Summit conference uh, having the opportunity to describe a little bit our views uh, in these important topics. So if you can go to the next slide please I will uh, just uh, uh, give here a very brief overview of, uh, of the company. Versalis is uh, uh, the chemical company of uh, ENI Group, one of the largest oil companies in the world. We are a company with about 5,000 employees, uh, with the plant uh, spread across uh, Europe mainly, but also recently we have development uh, in, uh, in Far East uh, with the joint venture. We have uh, always uh, consider R&D very important and the company owns and operates five R&D centers and has a very large portfolio of patents covering the multiple products that we make. And recently Versalis has also started to look into biotech and new development looking at natural resources as a possible feedstock and we have also a dedicated uh, business unit that is uh, covering the biotech and this business unit is working in parallel to the other business unit that are covering the traditional businesses of the company the intermediates in the polyethylene the styrenics and the elastomer next slide please so versalis uh, is not only a producer a producer but this also is a well-established licensor in the traditional chemical business. And uh, since the, the 60s, the companies has always uh, looked at the opportunity to license uh, its proprietary technologies. So with uh, a lot of plants, more than 40 licenses worldwide. And uh, recently, we have added to our portfolio of licenses also our Proesa technology, Proesa technology that was uh, acquired by the company in 2018. That is the technology that is the subject of this presentation, and that is the technology that is uh, producing advanced uh, uh, biofuel starting from uh, uh, linear cellulosic feedstock. And uh, I will go through in the next slides. Uh, uh, talking about uh, this, uh, this technology and what this technology can bring to the advanced biofuel. Uh, in this slide, uh, you can see a picture of uh, uh, the basic concept of this technology. The technology is really an enabler to convert uh, biomass uh, into fermentable sugar. And when we talk about biomass, you can see in the right, left side of the slide, that we really mean a different uh, kind of uh, renewable feedstock, uh, non-food-based biomasses uh, such as uh, straws uh, that can be 
uh, wheat straw that can be corn straw over or that can be sugar cane straw. Um, other uh, agricultural um, crop like uh, giant reeds or energy canes, and also wood chips like eucalyptus chips or poplar chips. So the technology is very flexible and can take uh, different kind of biomasses and uh, convert the biomasses in the carbonized product. And this decarbonized product can be cellulosic ethanol that is available today for licensing, but also can be chemicals, intermediates, other biofuels. And these are products that are under development in our portfolio of uh, development activities. Next slide, please. So, but if we take uh, a, a second, a brief look at the need for decarbonized product in the transport uh, sector, you can see in this slide uh, what is the, uh, the situation in, uh, in different years. And if you look at the dimension of the, of the boxes, uh, this is really the amount uh, is in, uh, in the right dimension. So it's representing the uh, the percentage in the different year of the different sources. And so if we move from the yellow to the blue and the green, we see how from the present years, the consumption of oil for the transport energy is going to, to decrease. So there will be less oil used for producing energy for the transport sector. And if you look on the bottom part of each, uh, each color, you can see what is the contribution of the other sources? And you see that, of course, all the different kinds of bioenergies and sustainable uh, energies for transport will play a role. Electricity will play a role, but also bioenergy and biofuel will play a big role in the, uh, in the transportation. So they need to grow from the existing 3% to more than a 16%. And so that uh, is a big part of, uh, uh, of uh, requirement of need of product into the market that need to be covered by a new solution. And if we go to the next slide, this is uh, basically the uh, strategic approach uh, that uh, was taken behind the development of Poesa technology. This technology started the development in the second largest uh, chemical company in Italy, MG, and then was acquired in 2018 by Versalis, that is uh, committed to a continuous improvement of this technology in order to maintain this technology at a very high value in the market. And, uh, while the technology progresses from a, a, a pilot scale to the first industrial scale in, in Crescentino, we have also had the possibility to improve the technology. First of all, look, and you can see in the bottom side of the slide, the key element of this technology. First of all, we look at the, having a, a large biomass versatility is important to have a technology capable of uh, using the biomass that are available in the different geographical areas. We also develop strategic partnership in order to improve the technology, in order to uh, have uh, for the project different solutions. A classical example is what you can do with the enzyme. You can buy the enzyme, you can produce on site the enzyme, and uh, this is uh, something that we have developed, the same for the East. The same is to develop a strong partnership with engineering companies in order to completely realize uh, uh, plans. And of course, uh, in all this activity, Versalis maintain a very uh, important control of all the IP and all the technology. It is in the position to back the investment with uh, uh, full guarantees and with a uh, structure that is similar to any other technology that we license in the petrochemical area. If we go to the next slide, we can uh, 
briefly see what is the, the schematic of this technology. And I think this uh, is well known because the scheme to go from biomass to a fermentable sugar and then to bioethanol is very, is very common. I think that this slide um, indicate uh, two key points. First of all, this technology is proven. Our plant in Italy has produced a second generation ethanol. Presently is producing hand sanitizer because in the light of the pandemic situation, we decided to convert the production of the plant to the needed hand sanitizer. This is the largest ethanol plant in Italy. So for that reason, we have been requested by the state to make this uh, modification of our production assets. But the plant is also ready to restart towards uh, the end of the year when we hope the pandemic situation will be over the production of second generation ethanol. And, uh, and the second big message is that this technology is based on a very simple process that is a steam based uh, uh, pretreatment process and these uh, uh, allow to have a very uh, safe uh, uh, and a very environmentally friendly process that can be applied in different uh, locations. If we go to the next slide, we can have just a brief uh, uh, overview of uh, uh, what we have uh, in our Crescentino experience achieved. Uh, first of all, the plant is producing not only second generation bioethanol, but it's really producing the other two major streams. One is biogas and the other is lignin. That is a very important co-product, is valuable, and uh, is, uh, is a way in which uh, we can improve the economics of this project. Uh, in fact, uh, lignin valorization is one of the major activity that we are doing under the development of the valorization of the co-product. The plant is also integrated with the on-site energy production, so is self-sufficient and is also producing biogas and is a zero liquid discharge water treatment plant. So it's really a unique example of a complete biorefinery now a complete biorefinery setup can bring value to, uh, to this kind of uh, technology. Uh, the, uh, the last, the bottom part of the slide describe what are our views for the future, because uh, Proez is a technology that is available today for licensing to produce uh, advanced bioethanol, cellulosic bioethanol. But it's also a technology that has uh, the possibility to produce uh, clean uh, cellulosic sugar that can be addressed to other production. And uh, we are working in our lab to demonstrate that we can produce bio oil that can be a good fit for biorefineries, for instance, for the production of HVO. Or we are developing biochemicals and we have different streams uh, of, uh, of development with a particular attention to the development of polymers, of biopolymers, because of the nature of our compound. And as I mentioned, there is a big stream of development in order to valorize the main byproduct of this plant. Because if we can extract value using lignin in certain high value application, we will have a, a better profitability of the overall uh, biorefinery. If we go to the next slide, and this is my last slide, this slide is trying to uh, list what are the uh, main uh, point of interest, the point that someone has to consider when he's uh, studying a second generation ethanol project. And he is, is indicating what are the really the positive elements of this uh, of a, of this technology or of a project that is using this kind of technology first of all i think there is a need of uh, finding uh, and uh, following solution that will uh, be usable in the transport industry as soon as possible 
and uh, this need can be done if we are using a fuel that are already known and, uh, and are well compatible with the existing uh, uh, engine pool that we have uh, today in the market. And ethanol is, uh, has already demonstrated this uh, compatibility with circulating engines. So the potential of uh, reduction of CO2 emission, the transport industry using ethanol is, uh, is a given. But uh, as we all know, in order to produce this kind of biofuel that will bring a benefit in terms of emission, we need to, uh, to afford a much higher cost, converting sustainable biomasses into sustainable biofuel will require a, a premium, will require a way to assure profitability of this uh, innovative investment. So for that reason, it's important that uh, there will be good uh, regulatory framework, a supportive regulatory framework that will uh, valorize the benefit that 2G biofuel can bring to the environment. The absence of a, a established, firm, long-term regulatory framework will be very difficult to develop this, this project because of the risk and because of the cost of this kind of investment. The other major um, comment is on the biomass availability. One of the beauty of this technology is that the abundance of linear cellulosic biomass is something that uh, is uh, guaranteed all around the world, is confirmed in all the geography. So having the possibility to use a different kind of biomasses to produce an advanced biofuel is something that is going to be beneficial for the local agroindustry, will not enter in competition with the food chain, and will make feedstock availability much more distributed around the world. The other uh, key element is the fact that technology is now proven at commercial scale. It's known to everybody in the industry that uh, this cellulosic ethanol has been a rough journey. There are examples of uh, good success. There are examples of good learning made at the right scale. And I think we need to build on this learning and uh, continue the development of this industry with a much lower degree of risk because uh, we can lever leverage the experience made by many companies around the world. And I think there are all the competencies to reduce the cost, to make this investment more and more competitive, to have uh, the production of enzyme perfected and so becoming less, uh, less uh, with a lower impact on the overall economics of the project. All these can be achieved, but we need to continue the journey that we start. And the other thing is, uh, of course, uh, uh, there is also the possibility to uh, look at how to improve the profitability of this, uh, of this project, uh, trying to retrofit maybe part of existing asset, uh, reducing the uh, capital investment uh, per uh, unit of ethanol produced. And this is something that can be explored, and that's, for instance, Versalis has developed uh, partnership with the engineering companies in order to uh, better address uh, this kind of, uh, of topics. So I think that uh, uh, the, the key message is, uh, is ready to be part of a uh, uh, sustainable project that will target the transport industry that will be more and more decarbonized and that will fit well in a circular economy. I think with this message, I end my presentation. We can go to the last slide and just confirm that Versalis is here, is ready to be part of your industrial project as a supplier of technology. And we look forward to, to hear from you. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Lee Lind. It's my pleasure to be part of this and honor to be part of this roundtable. And I appreciate the invitation from 
the meeting organizers to participate. I'm talking to you from my home in New Hampshire in the United States, and I look forward to when travel uh, restrictions are relaxed so that I can get down and see my friends in Brazil. So I'm going to share my screen, and I will be talking to you about consolidated bioprocessing with co-treatment. I'll explain what that is and the Advanced Second Generation Biofuel Laboratory. We call this the A2G Laboratory. A little bit about context first, starting with things we're all familiar with. The world is changing very fast, whether you look at oil consumption, population, or atmospheric CO2, unprecedented in historical terms. This has been enabled by a succession of industrial revolutions, which I think are pretty familiar to everybody. But now we have uh, an urgent need to uh, bring about the next industrial revolution, the sustainability revolution. This involves a shift to reliance on sustainable resources and processes. And it also involves addressing the issue that although the, rich, the world is rich, most of the inhabitants of this world we live in are still poor. I think bioenergy actually has important contributions to make to both of those. And, but it's also uh, very much a rapidly changing climate for sustainability in general, for transportation and for biofuels. This gives you some uh, indications of that. And so let me share a few features of my outlook. I'm gonna assume for the purposes of this presentation that second generation biofuels are a good idea. And I list some of the familiar reasons for that. We also need to acknowledge, as I just said though, that the biofuel landscape is changing and that this implies some challenges and some opportunities. So in the second generation space, deployment fell far short of expectations over the last decade, leading to radically decreased investment and also a change over the last decade. Most of the world is not looking for biofuels for carbon neutral light duty transport. They're looking for electric vehicles. There's greater demand for biofuels for aviation and heavy duty vehicles. For the last half century, the vast majority of effort on biological deconstruction of cellulosic biomass has focused on a scientific and technological paradigm featuring thermochemical pretreatment and added enzymes produced by aerobic fungi. There are two possibilities. If that current paradigm proves sufficient to launch a robust second generation biofuel industry with replicated plants, clearly that hasn't happened yet. That's the desired scenario. But in that scenario, alternative paradigms are important to consider to lower cost, increase competitiveness and accelerate deployment. In the undesired scenario that the current paradigm proves insufficient to launch a robust industry, then the alternative paradigms are the only path forward. Let's just keep in mind the importance of innovation and, get, and devising the right staircase of applications uh, for, as determinants of commercial success. Consider batteries, for example. They've changed chemistries three times from lead acid to nickel cadmium to lithium ion and are considering a next change to new battery chemistries. They've also targeted a staircase of applications from space to off-grid to personal devices to hybrid cars to grid storage um, and done very well over the last decade. And in the case of film versus digital cameras, sticking with what we knew didn't work out very well. We just have to be open to innovation. So let me tell you about consolidated bioprocessing with co-treatment. So consolidated bioprocessing, abbreviated CBP, the basic idea is that we take all of these four biologically mediated events that uh, we're familiar with involved in lignocellulose conversion, and we accomplish those with one microbial community in one unit operation without added enzymes. So we eliminate the need for added enzymes by using anaerobic microbes that produce sacrolytic enzymes while fermenting carbohydrates to ethanol. Well, there's a lot of enzymes out there and some of them have really different architectures at a molecular level. These are slides of cellulose fibers in the presence of yeast on the one hand and in the presence of Clostridium thermocellum, the thermophilic anaerobe I will be telling you about the way nature does lignocellulose conversion involves adherence of microbes right to the surface, which is a pretty different arrangement. And so we can ask what, what biocatalysts out there are most effective at lignocellulose deconstruction? And one doesn't answer that with a single experiment, but this was our first comparative experiment about five years ago. 
And we noticed that the pure culture of Clostridium thermocellum was significantly, roughly twice as effective at solubilizing um, mid-season switchgrass in this case, uh, in the absence of pretreatment, but it was about twice as effective as the conventional fungal cellulase, which we tested in the presence of yeast. Well, one test, test doesn't establish the point, but we undertook a very, very comprehensive set of tests. You can read here some of the things we changed, substrate loading, particle size, catalyst loading, feedstock, et cetera, et cetera. We validated results with other labs. And here's what we see. Here's a whole bunch of varieties of switchgrass. Here's poplar, here's corn stover, here's corn fiber, and actually here's just crystalline model cellulose. And for the, for the lignocellulosic feedstocks, the C. thermocellum is two to six fold more effective than industry standard fungal cellulase at liberating the or solubilizing the carbohydrate fraction, including both C5s and C6s compared to, um, to, compared to commercial cellulase, remarkable. So nature offers better biocatalysts at lignic cellulose deconstruction than conventional uh, cellulase preparations that we've been thinking of basing an industry on and indeed are today. Just to elaborate on that a little bit, if we zero in on corn stover, a particularly port important feedstock in the United States. So here are some literature values using commercial cellulases, including in some cases, loadings that aren't remotely affordable, 60 filter paper units per gram. And you get, you know, let's say 15 to 25% of the carbohydrate solubilized. And that's with added enzymes. With C. thermocellum, without added enzymes, we're up to about 66% and with a defined culture up to about 75%. So again, nature offers much better systems than the one we've tried to base an industry on. We could talk about how we got to that point, but we'll leave that for now. And briefly, it'd be good to sort of try to understand why this is true. And without going into a lot of detail, there is evidence that the presence of the microorganism on the surface of the lignocellulose, it actually facilitates the reaction, sort of enzyme-microbe synergy, beyond enzyme-enzyme synergy. And it's interesting to note that the uh, Clostridium thermocellum cellulase system called the cellulosome is an order of magnitude larger, completely different architecture, completely different relationship to the substrate as compared to the Trichoderma ricei uh, primary catalytic component. And so the, C, the T. ricei system accesses substrate by virtue of the enzyme being small. The C. thermocellum cellulosome system accesses substrate by virtue of being able to spread the, the material at the ends of the fibers. And so here you see a mutant that's lost the critical protein to do that versus a picture of a, a transmission electron micrograph of uh, in the presence of that component. So there's this added functionality of being able to unravel the cellulose bundles. And then we could ask, how best can we augment biological deconstruction of cellulosic biomass? How can we give nature a hand? The biofuel fields answer for the last 35 years has been some combination of heat and chemicals, but nature actually does it differently from that. Um, Nature uh, go, takes material, the lignocellulose, and alternately treats it biologically and mechanically. And so here you see the, uh, the cow chewing. And this actually involves about 2%, the chewing involves about 2% of the energy the, that the cow gets from this process. So very good uh, return. So as long as we're rethinking the biological deconstruction and biocatalysts, let's rethink how we give nature a hand. In the case of yeast, as you well know in Brazil with your sulfuric acid added to the cell recycle, uh, yeast is really, really resistant to chemical inhibition, not particularly resistant to mechanical uh, disruption, but microorganisms such as C. thermocellum, which appear to be nature's best at lignocellulose deconstruction, they're not particularly resistant to chemical inhibition, but very resistant to mechanical. This leads to the idea of co-treatment namely mechanical feedstock disruption during fermentation in lieu of thermochemical pretreatment prior to biological processing. So this is not the way we would propose this be implemented industrially, but for proof of concept, we filled a piece of four inch process pipe with ball bearings and stirred it and then did fermentation. In a nutshell, C. thermocellum is not inhibited significantly by milling, you can still get rapid substrate consumption. 
yeast is completely and cannot withstand that mechanical disruption. So if we now look at um, the added effect, this is a plot I showed you earlier, but look at the added effect of co-treatment, which is these blue bars. We see that for switchgrass, corn stover, and uh, switchgrass and corn stover, actually, two lignocellulosic substrates, one herbaceous and one woody. Excuse me, I'm keeping track of the time. Um, that with co-treatment and with C. thermocellum without added enzymes and with no pretreatment, you can get over 90% of the carbohydrate solubilized. That's C5 and C6. So this is the way we've been thinking about it with thermochemical treatment and fungal cellulase. This is what we are proposing. It avoids both of the, the factors responsible for the high cost of the current paradigm, but it also entails new challenges. And so we did a paper with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, and uh, we looked at, as a function of scale, we looked at the, at the payback time, which is nothing but the capital cost divided by the net annual revenues or EBITDA. And so we observed that uh, the CCBP is about eightfold lower or shorter payback period, that's good. And it's also much less sensitive to scale but a uh, much flatter uh, payback period as a function of scale, but it does require development to realize the performance parameters assumed here. That led us to form the Advanced Second Generation Biofuel Laboratory. This was established just last month after a long road and a lot of support from many people, which is much appreciated. The sponsor uh, is the Sao Paulo Research Foundation and the institutional host is the University of Campinas, but also the Faculty of uh, Chemical Engineering and the Center for Molecular and Biology and Biotechnology. And the partners uh, are Dartmouth, in addition, are Dartmouth College, Enchi Corporation, with several other partnerships under discussion. We have two focus areas. One is microbial cellulose utilization. The other is biotechnology. Uh, Avert Halverda leads the first group. Dan Olson leads the second group. Adriano Mariano is the Unicamp responsible professor. This would not be happening without the support of Sindelia Freitas. Uh, and it's my honor to direct this effort. And so our mission is to develop and enable deployment of disruptive second generation technology for sustainably producing ethanol from sugarcane and energy cane at much lower cost than today's technology. We want to advance research-driven innovation and enable scientific understanding to test the hypothesis that this concept offers a simpler, more robust, and decisively more cost-effective approach compared to the conventional paradigm. We want to actively publish results from the research uh, with some uh, publications in high-impact journals. We want to develop an intellectual community centered at the U University of Campinas that becomes recognized as a world leader. Uh, we want to advance commercial deployment of CCBP, working in close collaboration with small and large companies from Brazil and abroad. Um, this involves six PhD students, four postdocs, two technicians, with additions likely possible and international collaboration under discussion. So just to recap, I mentioned that we've been looking at, at lignocellulose conversion uh, in, in terms of a particular paradigm but there's a reason to look at other paradigms and whether or not the current paradigm is successful, which we hope it is. Also that innovation and the right sequence of applications are really key to commercial success. That was part of the background discussion. I introduced consolidated bioprocessing, CBP, which eliminates the need for added enzymes by using anaerobic microbes that produce sacrolytic enzymes while fermenting carbohydrates to ethanol. It turns out that that biocatalyst is much better at lignocellulose deconstruction than commercial cellulases. I've also mentioned that there are, alter there are alternatives to thermochemical pretreatment, namely milling during fermentation, which we call co-treatment. And so this overall combination of observations leads us to CCBP or consolidated bioprocessing with co-treatment, which has the potential for radical cost reduction but requires development to realize the performance that we assume. And this led to our forming the A2G lab, focusing on innovation, education and human resource development and partnerships with Brazilian producers that lead to commercial deployment and impact. I thank you very much. I'll stop sharing my screen. 
Biju Bachao, Ate Logo, and um, look forward to the discussion. <laughs>